Hey everybody, how are you? It's Peter again for MLB Trade Rumors and Discussions. It's Sunday, January 19th, 2020, my birthday. How are you guys today? Keeping this going every single day, just like I promised you guys. Sorry that I made some late videos this weekend because I went away for my birthday weekend. I appreciate the birthday wishes. I, again, it's been a really slow weekend with baseball rumors, but I wanted to talk about one thing to you guys, right? I wanted to mention... A little weird thing that I've seen on the Diamondback website, and I thought I'd discuss it for a few minutes. They put Escobar at second base, and they put Jake Lamb as the starting third baseman. Now, I know it's just the depth chart. Doesn't doesn't mean anything. However, I did find it a little bit weird, and I thought I'd discuss it with you talking about Jake Lamb. So let's make believe. Let's play the game with the... Mike Hazen doesn't make any moves. There is absolutely not, nothing worth it, right? As much as all us fans think it's something's going to happen, right? I think something has to happen. I know there was rumors with Marte going to the Mets that they reopened the trade. I think the Diamondbacks are going to go get something. At least, if it's not gigantic, it's going to be at least something good. If that happens where it comes to the point where there is no options and they just decide to leave the team pretty much as it is and make a tiny move, let's talk about Jake Lamb. The last couple of years, it's been rough for Jake. I found it interesting that they decided to keep him, you know, because he was a guy who didn't make sense. But if you look a little deeper into Jake, a couple of years ago, he batted 250, hit 30 home runs, right? He had an amazing start to the year. Remember that in 2017? And then he definitely died out. He struggled against lefties like always, but he definitely died out in the second part of the year. The year before that, he had 20-something home runs. It's not out of this world to think if he is healthy, he can bounce back and have a really good season, right? So that could be an option too, right? That could be one of the power hitters that we're looking for because if he does hit 30 home runs and he does have a pretty good full season and he kills righties like he usually does back then a couple years ago, and then you start platooning him sometimes, which I always thought bothered me because I think it always would get him out of his groove, you know? But you don't need him necessarily all the time right now. So if you do, if you want to play him against righties and you want to get him half the time against some of those tough righties like Maeda or um, Bueller against the Dodgers and you want to bring him in, you know, you never know. You never know of how what year he can have. The only reason I'm mentioning that is it just seems like I'm waiting more and more for these moves and it's taking longer and longer and I think something's going to happen. I really do from the bottom of my heart. But I just wanted to see the other end of it, right? And I'm not hating if Jake Lamb was the third baseman and he bounced back. Not saying it's going to happen. I don't think it is. I think we're going to make a move and I think at the very least they will sign Kevin Pillar. I think at the very least they will sign Kevin Pillar if he's still out there. It just it makes too much sense to me. However, if Jake Lamb does play... The guy can still hit 25 to 30 home runs. The guy still can play a pretty good third base. And it's very easy to forget the type of year he had a couple years ago because just the fact that he only played like 60 games and 50 games and by the time he got his groove back, his shoulder, couldn't get his swing back, everything was going wrong for this poor guy, right? Everything just went wrong for him. But then when he came back, he's just seen him struggling and then all of a sudden you forget. There's a reason the... Um, Mike Hayes and Keppel. Maybe they seen something. Maybe they wanted to give him one more shot. I gladly would take him here because I always was a fan of him. And the guy was raking for about three months. And he looked like the next big thing. Before he started dying out. And then he hurt himself. And then it was a shame. So maybe. Maybe that works out. You know, having Escobar go to second base is definitely, you know, it's not going to kill you to have your second baseman hit 30-something home runs and take a shot at third base. That's just one of the options they can go with. And then they can start platooning. You know, if this guy Young turns out to be a good ball player, that's another guy you can start moving around, right? If Young, you put him at second and you can switch Escobar back at third when there's tough lefties pitching. There's just so many options you can go with, right? We don't know who's making the team. We don't know who's going to kill in spring training. We have no clue at this point what we're going. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's bothering me. I'm going crazy. Every day I'm waiting for something just so I know, you know, where we're going and kind of what the year is going to look like. And I don't know. I have no idea. I keep mentioning to you guys the same thing. I'm trying to give you all these different scenarios. But the truth is, there's so many different options we can go. And right now, we won't know what works. You know, there's some things that it, it's always called where if you have too many options, it's not that good. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it too. Sometimes there's too many ways to go. I don't like that. I'd just rather 
a couple ways and switch here or there. Right now we have five, six players that can play. Somebody can play left field and second base at the same time. Escocott Bar can play second and third at the same time. We can get Rojas to come into second or he can play the outfield. We can get Martego from center field to set. It's just so much things going on. And sometimes that's tough for a manager because you're trying to get every player some time. And then players who keep switching in and out, they can't get into their groove because they're constantly switching positions. And they're constantly not getting enough at bats. And that's where it's dangerous. That's why I said to make a big move and to have only a couple players behind and then we don't have to worry about this. There's just too many guys going on. There's too many guys in our farm shifts. There's so many players. So right now, you know, you have to make sure you get your team. I want it to be solidified. We only have 25 days before baseball starts, right? You only have, excuse me, for pitchers and catchers to report. So you kind of want to get something going soon. And I think that's why Hazen says it's unlikely to make a big move at this time. But I think what's the truth is if, if Hazen, if the right move comes, it's going to work. If the right move comes along. The same thing with Ranky. It didn't look like Ranky until the last second was going to happen. So if to the last second, if Marte comes available or if Chris Bryant decides to take his price down, it's going to happen, right? It's going to happen. He may surprise you with a move different to Oakland or something, right? I wouldn't mind to get Laureano on the athletics. That guy can play center field. He got a cannon. He would be loved in Arizona. So there's a lot of things that Hazen may shock you with, but it just has to be the right move. Again, and I'll say this all the time, he's not going to just make a move to make it. He'd rather leave Lamb and switch it with Rojas and then Young and platoon them all at the same time until a move presents itself, which I understand because, you know, that's what makes him a great GM. He's not going to just rush something unless it makes sense. He's not going to sacrifice the whole team. That was just something I thought I'd mention because I'm, I'm still a big fan of Jake Lamb and I would love to see him bounce back to the 2017 numbers because if he does, remember what I told you, if you add Lamb without having to trade prospects and he does happen to hit 30 home runs this year and he bats you 250, 260, kills righties, I'm not, I'm not going to argue with that, right? Between him and Calhoun, that'll be around 60 home runs and I know they both won't bat you so for high averages, but that's what you got. Peralta and Marte and Escobar for those for those guys will get you 280, 290 averages. It'll be just a scary freaking lineup if Lamb could come through, if we don't get anybody. But I still say we do. All right, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.